Let's talk about partial refresh and why I almost never uh, file down the worn spots and frets. You will hear people say, oh, um, I've got some worn spots in my frets and I'm going to have the whole fretboard planed um, and taking those divots out. This is why I almost never do that. Um, let's take a look at these frets here. Let me show you some frets with the divot. This is a really cool um, 75, 74D, 18, and a sunburst. So we know this one's going to sound good, right? Okay, but let's take a look at these frets I just pulled out here. And you can see the divots in them. The first three frets, five frets were really bad. The seventh had a little bit of divots in it. So I'm going to do a partial refret up to the seventh fret. And I'll talk about the partial refret in just a second. But here's why I would not file this down. I would not get my files out here and buzz all these down to take those divots out. The reason I wouldn't do that is because these upper frets up here are in really good shape. So, let's get our calipers out. Zero it out here. And if I measure these frets up here, I'm getting 36 thousandths of an inch, which means they're in really good shape. Um, they would be brand new. They would be about 37, 39 inch, 39, or they could be 43 if they were just carved. But anyways, 35 is pretty good. Uh, that's totally acceptable. I'm concerned about them when they get below 30 thousandths of an inch. The reason I don't like them below 30 thousandths, that is just about the point where when you put your finger down on this fret, you are not going to be able to get a good bite of the fret on the string. You're going to have to push your finger all the way to the fingerboard in order to get that string to get a bite. So, you can see what's going to happen here. If I just file all of these frets down, then I've ruined the upper frets. And it's not going to be long before your file down frets wear a little bit more and now they're too low. And I don't know how you're going to file this fret down right here and end up with more than 30 thousandths of an inch. And so while this is sitting in my hand, we're going to go ahead and measure it and see what this actual fret is. And see, this is a 40 thousandths of an inch. So these, these, these frets were 40 thousandths of an inch and these here are full height. So there's my point. These frets up here are still full height. There's no divots in them. They're perfectly good frets. But if you take your file and lower all of the frets, then it's not going to be long before these frets up here wear down and they're going to be hard to fret. And then you're going to have to replace them. And then guess what's going to happen? You're going to have to replace them all because you filed these down to a lower height. So if you would just replace the worn frets with new frets, you would keep everything at the same height. When you go in here and file all of these down, your nut height is going to change. You're going to have to adjust your nut slots. And then when you go and put your new frets in there, which you're going to have to do sooner rather than later, you're going to put new frets in here and they're going to be anywhere from 10 to 15 thousandths of an inch taller. Your nut is not going to fit anymore. You're going to have to have a new nut. And if you've got something like a fossil walrus ivory nut, or even a genuine ivory, an antique nut on there, that's bad news because now your nut slots are going to be too slow, too low, and you're going to have to either shim up the nut or you're going to have to do something about it. If you would just replace the worn frets, you could keep everything with full height all the time. And also, the thing, other thing is, is if you go pulling all these frets out, then there's only a certain number of roof frets you can do, five maybe, before, especially on a rosewood fingerboard, before the slots get worn out. And they get wider and wider and wider every time you yank a fret out of there. So, if you would leave these frets alone, then these slots will stay nice and tight, and you can deal with these five right here. You can, you can keep those in pretty good shape. You can use glue. Um, you can use glue and sawdust, you know, you can keep these in pretty good shape, and especially if you glue them in where you're not relying necessarily upon that super tight fit right there. You can continue to refret the first five, you know, five to ten times. It's a lot easier to deal five to seven worn out slots than it is worn out slots on the entire fingerboard. So, 
in this case, we're going to do a partial refill. And also because it saves you a little bit of money because you don't have, you can give many partial refrets as opposed to leveling, crowning, or, or rather filing and grinding down the frets. And then you're going to have to recrown them, which a lot of people don't do. I can't tell you how many frets I've, how many guitars I've seen where the frets are filed down flat and they never even went back and recrowned them. And the crowning is critical. I use a Stumac diamond file and you can see it's got a automatic curve in it this way so it's pretty easy to recrown here but even so as that fret gets lower and lower and lower it gets harder and harder to recrown um it's, it's not the same as a full height fret uh, so you're just so much better <laughs> in my humble opinion doing a partial refret the key to a partial refret is to match pretty closely the original frets. Now, if these frets were, say, 39 thousandths of an inch tall, and I had my choice of Jeskar wire over here, which is Jeskar 4380, and what that means is that they're 43, inch, 43 thousandths of an inch tall and 80 thousandths of an inch wide. Stock Martin wire is 80 and it can be about 37 to 39 depending on what it is um the steam axe is a little bit taller stock martin wire is about used to be about 37 thousandths of an inch so if you put 43 on these and you have 37 over here you can see you're going to have a step down this wire is going to be taller this one's going to step down that's not necessarily a bad thing because if you totally wore these frets out, that means that's where you play most of the time. And you don't get up here and play a whole lot. So, what that's going to do is give these frets a little bit more clearance. Your string is going to come across here like this, clearing these frets. And then when it gets to the lower frets like this, you're just going to have a little bit more clearance. Which means you can set a pretty low action up here in the area that you play the most. And the string will have a little bit more room to vibrate down here on this part of the neck, which is especially useful when you get up here around the body. And the body can have the so-called 14th fret hump, which I've demonstrated already a million times, is really due to having too much neck relief. So you ought to take the neck relief out, and then you won't have a problem with that 14th fret hump. But if you have slightly lower frets up in here, then you're going to have just that much more clearance of the string. So there's nothing wrong, really, with having slightly lower frets up in this area and taller frets up here. In fact, some guys on electric guitars do that deliberately, where they have taller frets up in here and they go lower and lower and lower and maybe even use three sizes of frets going down so that when they get up into here, they've got an actually an even lower fret. Um, and they say, well, you can have a lower action that way. Well, you can, you know. You can also set up your guitar to where you have a lower action anyways, and you don't need to do that. But point is, there's nothing really wrong with having lower frets on the upper end of the neck where you don't really play. The difference is only a couple thousandths of an inch, uh, 37 to um, 43, six thousandths of an inch. I mean, it's, it's not that big of a deal. Now, the key to this is going to be, if this fret is taller, 43, and this is a 36, when you go to put your finger down here, the string is going to, you're going to have to push down hard because it'd be like having a tall nut slot. The string is trying to stay up higher, you're trying to push it down. So the real key to having the different fret heights, if, if you end up doing that, is to make what I call a transition fret. Make that transition fret halfway in between the two. So if these frets end up being 43 thousandths of an inch, and by the time you put them in here, let's just say they're 45 thousandths of an inch off the fingerboard. So if you measure them like this, you get 45 thousand. 45 here and 39 here. So you've got a difference of six, uh, six thousandths of an inch roughly. Make this one in between. Make this one about three thousandths of an inch taller than this one and three thousandths of an inch lower than the previous so this is your transition fret so that when you go to fret here you've got less of an effort to push down on this you see so there's an exaggeration this fret's tall this one's low and you try to push your string down and you're going to have to fight against this fret 
to get that string down. But if you bring them down closer like this, that's less of a deal. And you're not going to notice three thousandths of an inch, believe me. Um, I'd be very surprised if you did. And it's only for one fret right here. And then once you get the fret in this one, then you're pushing against this fret and so forth and you're clear. So it's only the transition fret that you have to worry about. And the rest of these, you know, they could be here, you know. They could be that high. And when your string came off of that, you would have all this extra clearance up here, which is pretty nice if you tend to play primarily in the first five, seven frets, um, which probably most people do. And some of you go up here and you play a pair of that. I mean, I play a pair of that, but I, de I can definitely handle a lower fret height up here as long as that transition fret is good. It doesn't bother me a bit to, to have that. And I can set the action lower so that the action is terrifically nice and buttery up in here. And then it's just a little bit higher here. You've got more bounce in the strings here because you're at the middle. So it's easier to push down right here than it is over here. So a little bit higher action right here, if this is low, doesn't matter. And also when you go to level the frets, you know, I have videos on this again, you know, I prop the headstock up and I put weights on the body so that I put tension on that neck and I level the frets flat under tension. And that's going to help a lot because your transition fret is going to appear as a high fret. So under tension, or under weight, then I will work on these three frets right here to get that transition nice and not level, but not at a transition that makes sense, okay? So... If you ever do this, you'll see what I'm talking about clearly. So the question now is, is on this guitar, um, I already corrected the neck relief on it. I took these frets out, and it needed to have this part here sanded down just a little bit in order to bring the neck back, make a build a bow into the neck so that it'll have a flatter neck relief. And I used my sanding block right here. So I've already done that, and when I put my straight edge here, my notch straight edge on this. Um, the neck is perfectly flat up in here and it drops away, falls away right here. So when I get this all strung up, the neck is going to be really nice and flat. And there's a lot of reasons for doing that. I got a video on that. Go look up the video why I don't like neck relief and I document it. Okay? All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to decide let's size frets because I have two choices here. I've got Stumac 148, which is 39 thousandths of an inch tall and 84 wide. That's funny, it's 84 wide. And then I've got the Jeskar um, 4380, which I've already shown you, and it is 43 inches tall and 80 inches wide. You're never going to notice that 3 thousandths of an inch width, trust me, because the frets are wider apart right up here, so a little wider fret up in there. Um, it's going to fit in with the space nicely, and as you come up in here, narrow frets are going to be good. And that's another trick that you can use if you want to. If you play up here a lot, you can go with a thinner fret wire, narrow fret wire up on these upper frets here. Um, you could drop down to a 78th, which would be like a banjo wire. It's the same height as this, but it's narrower. And you can go with narrow fret wire up in here, which will give your fingers just a little bit more room to fit in here. And it might help if you have fat fingers like me, it might help you with a cleaner note. I've done that on mandolins quite a bit. I use a wider fret wire on the first seven, seven frets, nine frets. And then on the upper frets past that, I shift to a thinner, thinner wire. And it's not that noticeable visually. And so what if it is, you know, um, you know, are you concerned about cosmetics or are you concerned about playing here? So that's another little trick you can use is to use a thinner wire, narrower wire on these upper frets right here. It gives you a little bit more room in there and your wider wire back here. So I'm not concerned at all about the difference between the 84 and the 80. But let's see what kind of wire we have here. So I've already measured one of them. And I'm going to use my Stumac. Gauge. It's got a notch right here, so you put your fret wire in there like this, and you can measure it, and it's 40 thousandths of an inch, and that's on a non-worn spot, too. So I'm going to measure a couple of them, 38, 39, yeah, so it's 40 thousandths of an inch. So that's what these are going to be, too, but um, 
because these have not been touched, they've not been worn out. So let's just get a couple of these to make sure, but I'm pretty sure these are going to be 40. 39 and a half, 40. Yeah, these are 40. Okay? The one thing you do not really want to do is you don't want to use a lower wire here and a taller wire here because now you're going to create the opposite problem to where you're like this and the string is going to come here and it's going to buzz on these upper frets. Um, so you're going to have to have a higher action up here because you have to set the action for this upper part and you're going to have a higher feel up in here. You don't want that. You always want the taller wire up here. So these are 40 thousandths of an inch. Um, so I'm going to feel real comfortable using the Jeskar at 43 and then we're going to measure the width and we've got 77 70 the width is hard to do because it fret wants to rotate on you 80. so i'm getting a, a comfortable 80. i'm not getting 84 i'm not getting over that 73 that's not 73. you got to get that fret on there really straight 80 perfect those frets are 80 by 40, so I'm not going to use the steam act. I'm going to use the Jess card, 4380, and we're going to end up with, and then of course, you know, I'm going to level this too, so I'm going to probably lose one to two thousandths of an inch, so I may not even have the high fret. They may be, they may be very consistent, but that's the key to doing a good partial refret is to try to match the new wire to the old wire and if you have to go one way or the other you go with a taller wire you could sit there and grind the whole thing down and get it all level but to me that's like a waste um it's like why not take advantage of this of, of the new tall fret wire you know um because you know that's i just would take advantage of it because there's nothing wrong with a slight step down right here we're not even going to have much of a step down we're going to have two thousandths of an inch if, if that but I've determined which wire I'm going to use. The Stumac wire would be, I think, just a little bit low at 39 thousandths. It probably match pretty good, but it's, it could be a little low by the time I get it seated. So I'm going to go with the Jess card, uh, 4380. It's going to be 43 thousandths of an inch, 80 wide, which matches this. And I bet you I get 80 if I measure these. Yeah, 80 perfectly. So, so there we go. Calibers not quite in there. So. We've decided what wire we're going to use. I told you how to do a partial refret and why we do a partial refret rather than file everything down. And then when these wear down, then you're going to have to replace them all. Um, just not a good idea. You know, when you get to mandolins especially, um, Lynn Dunbosch was one of my mentors. Um, he taught me an awful lot. And he had a really good, interesting point as he works on Lloyd Lloyd mandolins, you know, and top dollar stuff. And he pointed out that on the lowers, a lot of times the upper frets are not even touched because everybody's playing back down here. So he would take the upper frets out and repurpose them back here and then replace these frets, upper frets where nobody ever played except Chris Feely. But, you know, he would replace those with a different fret wire so that you would have original lower frets out here where most people would pay attention to. And I thought that's a pretty good trick. And that also pointed out to me something interesting is that if you leave these frets alone and don't file them down and don't, don't mess with them, then you'll have the original frets up here over the body in the higher frets and you have them for reference. So I'm fairly sure that these are original frets on this guitar. Um, I pulled them out and the fret slots are super, super clean. So I don't think these have ever been pulled. I think this is the first time these frets have been pulled because these slots are super tight. Uh, when I went to clean them out with my little saw, I actually pulled the saw out and that's a tight fret slot. So I, I'm fairly certain that these are original frets up here. So that's kind of cool to know, you know, if you're dealing with a 1975 this is almost a vintage guitar by now but you can you can keep these upper frets for reference rather than file it down sand it down then you lost that so you know that's something to think about too and i don't see any damage i don't see any chipping i don't see any evidence that these frets have ever been out um so i'm pretty certain that these are the original frets and it's kind of cool to keep those in there you know Got them for reference. So that's another advantage of not following everything down. So 
Okay, I just got this guitar in today and I don't want to get some stuff done to it before I do my typical 70s overhaul. The bridge is in the wrong place. So we're going to put a Madagascar Rose bridge, bridge on it with two and a quarter inch spacing, long vintage saddle. We're going to replace the bridge plate, huge rosewood bridge plate, typical 70s. We're going to put black locusts in there. The owner came by and we went through all this. And we're going to put a black locust bridge plate. We're going to lightly scallop. We're going to do the popsicle base. It's going to have to have a neck reset. It's getting tuners on there. Um, I'm doing seven frets and I, I love it. The fingerboard over. So we got really good relief on it. Um, it's straightforward 70s. One thing about this 70s, this particular, it's got a great big neck on it. It's got a really big neck. And it's got a very even taper up in here. So the first part up here is pretty thick. It's almost as thick as... Up in here, oh, you know, let's just do it, okay? Let's get these calipers out and we'll just measure this thing. Let's measure the second fret so we avoid. And I'm getting 870. We'll come up here. And I'm getting 960, so it went up 100 thousandths of an inch. So it did, does have a taper, but and 1026 so we do have a taper to it but it's thick you know it's a pretty chunky neck back up in here all right so that's it um let's close this out and i'm going to put frets in here using um, fish glue glue them in there and then i'm going to leave them overnight to get nice and tight i'm ready to put the tuners on tomorrow so tomorrow i will do the tuners um a new nut i'll turn up these frets and then I will start working on the bridge system down here. But I get a little bit of progress right here, so it's about 9 o'clock at night. I thought I would get to work and do some stuff, so see you later.